I would like to to ask you, uh, uh, particularly, well, you know, as as uh, both uh, as an intellectual and as a humanities scholar, and, and well, actually, some of us also, you know, we support the idea of of, of a well-rounded education, and, and that includes obviously humanities. How? I mean, is there anything, or how can we counter that sort of narrative of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, or should we? Or well, I mean, yeah. well, well, I mean, yeah. we should, yes, uh, but yes. <laughs> but but uh, I, I mean, is it? I, I, I like sometimes I think that it's a bit of a of an, a very up, a, a very uphill battle. Yes. Let's see. Um, the same way we just mentioned that um, in the past, a certain group of religious people um, made a self-criticism about uh, their their selfishness or of uh, living separated from society in order to achieve uh, heaven, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps we have to do uh, the same as uh, academics and. Um, Try to establish. Uh, uh, that's what I try, uh, particularly myself. Uh, I try to make connection from the ac the academy, the, the university, and the rest of the world. And uh, one way is uh, using the mass media, for example, as much as you can, Be and uh, writing in, um, for example, in in papers in academic paper are very dry. You have to be sometimes a specialist uh, to understand uh, a single page. Uh, and uh, that is okay because we need to push the, the, the limits of knowledge, that is okay. But uh, you, we have to be able also to, um, to connect with the rest of the society. You have to accumulate things to be successful, to be rich, and that is more or less the, the value of a consumerist society. Mm -hmm. And we are living in a deeply materialist cons uh, consumerist society. So we, we cannot ignore that. And, uh, and that is why, um, why, for example, we as universities uh, became a kind, a kind of um, branch of the, that office that, um, and even many huge company come to university saying, we need uh, people prepared for this, for that. And nobody questioned that because, of course, uh, parents, uh, students uh, are very worried about uh, their future jobs. That is completely understandable. We have to prepare people for the labor market, yes. Uh, but that is not uh, uh, um, uh, everything. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we have to challenge, uh, always, we have to challenge everything. Remember, professor, we are troublemakers. So if you, you, if you come and say the, the sky is blue, I, I'm going to question that. And uh, probably we'll discover that it's not all the time blue. Most of the time it's not blue. But anyway, that is our job. And um, we have to question that the, the big uh, paradigm of uh, uh, we have to produce, produce, or produce. And one way to keep that anxiety in the population is the precarization of jobs. So everybody are worried about not just getting the job, if when you get the job, you are always worried about losing that job. And because of that, you are a slave, wage the slave. Because you don't question anything. And so the, the level of anxiety, of the precarization, um, instability in the society, which is very, very good for the market, very good for the economy, but not good for the people. And we have to question that. And the only way to, to, to do that job is to connect with the rest of the society. We are not gods, but I think we have to challenge everything, even ourselves. How? Well, say, break the bubble. We leave, the university is a bubble, but it's not the only bubble. The society is composed by multiple bubbles. Our bubble is one, right now one of the most productive from an uh, economic point of view. Uh, in the agriculture, in the industry, everything needs uh, a lot of high technology that is normally developed and produced in university, etc. But that is not everything. We are not animals that need uh, food to eat and period. We have spiritual, psychological need as well. We have uh, to know the human capital that we inherited from literature, from philosophy, from art, from cinema, and uh, um, and the market 
also has played a very negative uh, um, role in that, corrupting what has been uh, real art or high art. How? Simplifying it. The same way that uh, the market rules uh, impose their law and simplifies the individuals, making a very, very narrow being with very few ideas and very few uh, or hor horizons, etc. The same has done, because it's very important to the second co consequence, has done with art. So for example, very simple, um, uh, in, in the in case of literature, uh, the, the, the easiest uh, novel is to read, the, the easier to sell it. Because if you do uh, write a book thinking that you have to sell it, of course, you need to survive if you are a writer, it, completely understandable. An editor needs to survive, completely understandable. But uh, if that is the only goal, just to sell and to make money, you are going to simplify, to simplify, and simplify the product. The thing that, that first comes to mind is that, well, I mean, mass media has a, or mass media have, uh, uh, well, you know, they're basically a, 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 a holding of a specific interests. Yes. And uh, well, you know, they have there are editorial lines, and they yeah. are there are you know, they're essentially trying to sell a product. Yes, so exactly. When you are when you are uh, trying to combat that, it, it's sort of like adding an extra layer of difficulty. Of, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but that is the reality that uh, we have to deal with, and uh, it has been more or less the, the same for a long time. In the case of uh, mass media, um, uh, we, we were talking a little bit uh, before about uh, um, how the mass media was the the uh, the, uh, the arm of manipulation, mm -hmm. and uh, and one of the, those manipulation was the, the the fake news that now everybody talk about fa fake news, but uh, there were there was a lot of fake news in the in, at the beginning of the 20th century in, during the throughout the 20th century. And uh, the, that media was used in different ways to, to manipulate uh, opinion. Uh, very very briefly, I would, do recommend to uh, take note and read about uh, Edward Bernays, for example. Okay, and very briefly, uh, Edward Bernays was the, the double nephew of uh, Sigmund Freud um, and came to the US very young age and uh, became the, the mastermind of, uh, of, of ma of the public opinion manipulation. <clears throat> and uh, he also sells many wars, including wars in Central America. For example, the, the CIA destroyed uh, the only democracy in Central, Central America in Guatemala in, in 1953 um, uh, because uh, the, the democratic elected president, Jacobo Bernay, Jacob Bernay uh, who was not a communist, uh, uh, had a bad idea to um, implement his promise of uh, uh, dominant, uh, I mean, um, nationalization of a tiny piece of land. He um, proposed to compensate the United Fruit Company, uh, paying the, the 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 value of the land that uh, the company declared in uh, its uh, tax returns. And uh, they say no, the, no way. And uh, they just convinced the CIA and many others to destabilize that government because many in the United Fruit Company had uh, uh, shares in the. Uh, uh, so many, people, many have, people in government and in the CIA had shares in the United Fruit Company. Company. Okay. Company. Exactly. And there are many other stories with the Dual Brothers, etc. Uh, long story short, uh, uh, Bernay was able to um, mislead the, the American uh, population and uh, also the Central American people um, selling the idea that Bernay was communist. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, you mean fine. Arbenz? Arbenz. Yes, sorry, okay. Bernard yes, Bernay, yes, yes. Chicago, Arbenz, thank you. Yes. And uh, finally, they succeed that way. They destroy that democracy. Um, the US uh, just plays a puppet in the government, uh, uh, Castillo Armas. After the 50s through the 80s late, uh, they had uh, in, in Guatemala a terrible uh, conflict, civil wars. So many hundred thousand of people die. And uh, most of those governments, every government where dictatorships, military dictatorships, brutal dictatorships, and criminal dictatorships were supported by the, the US governments. Um, and, and Bernay was able to manipulate the opinion uh, to sell that. And the same happened in, like, we can give 
dozen of examples in Latin America. But that was the role of the manipulation of public opinion through the mass media. So fake news is nothing new. It mm -hmm. was even more tragic in the past. And uh, so that is a reality we have to deal with, but we have no, no other way than to uh, try to uh, expose and uh, what is the truth based on the documents we, we have. In, in, in those stories, there is no discussion because uh, no scholar in the US discussed uh, what I said in, in, in the previously because documents are everywhere and there, there are declassified documents in George Washington University and many other archives. And so the, there is no discussion about that. So it is in what you're talking about is not, it's not really a matter of opinion. It's, no, no. It's, it is fact. fact. It is, it's fact, historical and social fact. Right? Uh, clearly backed by evidence, backed by documents, etc., etc. And uh -huh. that is our job. Yes. Because in the in the, uh, but we have to do that, but also communicate that to uh, to the, the 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 people through what? Well, not mostly through the media too. So the media uh, is good to manipulate uh, uh, opinion, but may work sometimes as a tool. To, uh, to disassemble those uh, narratives that are completely baseless, and we have to provide it the proof. The See, it's sort of like the, the myth of Sisyphus, right? Like mm -hmm. you know, pushing, the, pushing the stone uphill and then going up there, and then the, the stone falls down and you have to do it all over again. So it, it can be a little, I guess it can be, Exhausting. not not a little, very frustrating at times. Yeah, and, it is. But we have no option, right? I mean, not moral option. We have many options. I mean, it's much more comfortable to um, please the power. It's much more safer. Some people cry when they they, they um, are compassionate with power, powerful people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't need that, that compassion. But um, it's uh, much easier and comfortable. But um, sometimes if you have a certain commitment with truth, which is a moral uh, um, obligation, mm -hmm. particularly in the academia, but because in the academia we have even more moral uh, um, obligation to do that because we have certain resources and cert certain power. Not, we are not powerful, but we have certain power to do certain research. And uh, so we have to share what we, we found. The, the different, you know, the different trends in terms of you know the, the 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 face of the population if you want if you want to put it that way i mean whether we whether we or whether this this america wants it or not that those trends are going to continue to happen so essentially yeah um, yeah it will sort of naturally organically change the definition if, of if, even if we ask uh, what, what am i it's very hard to to answer that question. Uh, even when we consider, well, I am an individual, but I have changed throughout my entire life, okay, uh, many times. And uh, but uh, just consider a, a huge nation mm -hmm. that you are. In that case, you have a much more complicated uh, problem. In the if you look at the picture, today's picture, and it's also more complicated if you look throughout history. Uh, first of all, I, I would say it's a good exercise, but completely useless. Uh, um, and, and, the, uh, and the question, what, what, what America is, or will say, what are the Americans better? And uh, also, it's very hard to answer. First of all, because you will have different definition from different groups. And uh, uh, even if you have a picture in a moment, that's going to change. Just imagine, imagine uh, Jefferson meeting a, a cowboy in, a, in a Texas. Uh, he will say, uh, I'm pretty sure, or not sure, but it's an imagine um, experiment. Uh, he will say, that is just a Mexican, a white Mexican. Because a cowboy that now uh, we identify from abroad, and uh, also it, many Americans may identify the cowboy yeah, no, the, Mar the Marlboro Man, right? Yes, yes exactly, yeah. like the real American. Yes. Th that is a mix of Mexican traditions of the Anglo who, when they migrate to, to Texas and uh, reinstall uh, uh, 
slavery there because it was illegal there, but they also adopted many Mexican um, traditions like the vaquero, the cowboys, the vaquero, mm -hmm. and they, they had the gangs, the, the etc. The rest of the, the part of the tradition that will be completely foreigners for the founding father generation that were more British like. Mm -hmm. Uh, people. So, wh who is the real America in that case? Even white, uh, bo in both cases, very white. It's, uh, it's very hard to define. The easiest uh, definition. Either were born here or decided to. Or to, to, to migrate. To, or or exactly. you know, become naturalized. naturalized. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And then you will have a huge diversity of uh, Americans. Um, because what America is, is look like a box and that uh, fixed box, and you have to. Uh, that's. Uh, very common when a society has a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. about uh, their own destiny, etc. And uh, that was very common in Latin America when the republics were founded. Uh, everybody were trying to define what an Argentinian is, what uh, Bolivia is, etc. Because they were not sure about that. They were new republics. And that, that's basically is also an, a romantic idea, the idea of the individual versus the classic idea, right? More less individual, individualistic, but uh, the individual and as a person, but also the individual as a as a nation. Uh, I would like to I would like you to to sort of uh, expand on that thought, which I find it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, that, yes, I that I wrote that uh, probably ten years ago. Um, yeah, uh, Hugo Chavez like. Um, the Nicaraguan revolution was very different to Cuban revolution because they were based on religion in many aspects. And uh, well, in the case of the Nicaraguan Re revolution, the bases were basically religious bases, completely different to C Cuban revolution. And uh, in the case of uh, Chavez, who was a religious pe uh, individual person, right? He normally quoted uh, Jesus, etc. Now, in the U.S., uh, many people uh, identify, for example, um, uh, capitalism is democracy and uh, is Christianism, which is completely arbitrary. And uh, uh, China today is a communist country, very capitalist country, nothing to do about democracy. And uh, all the, the, the dictatorship we had in Latin America, most of them supported and promoted by U.S. governments, uh, many, I would say, dozen of them were brutal Nazi-like uh, dictatorships, mm -hmm. uh, pro-capitalist. That is why they were dictatorship to protect the capital, and uh, nothing to do with democracy. So uh, the, the identification is part of the ideological or the semantic uh, field. field yeah. You identify certain ideas uh, and uh, crystallize those ideas, and then you continue uh, fighting other battles. But uh, 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 capitalism, democracy, and uh, Christianism uh, have been crystallized uh, all together. So again, you may have a, some people may question this, but uh, I would say you may have a, demo demo a capitalist democracy, but you, you may have also, and we have many examples of huge, terrible dictatorship that were capitalist as well. The same with socialism. You have democratic and, and you may have dictatorship that are uh, socialist or communist. And uh, in the case of uh, Christianism, uh, th there is not a, like there is not a single America. There is not a single Christianism. Mm -hmm. uh, today you have many uh, denominations, and they are based on the same uh, book. But uh, religions are not based on the book; are based on readings. The reading of the book. Exactly, yeah. and we and you have many readings, and as many as churches, or um, as many as denomination religions, uh, Christian religions, or sects. Right. And if you look at the history, that tragedy is even worse. You have uh, people, ki Christian, killing each other um, because of that. And the, the early Christians in the first the three centuries are completely different to the Christian in the last three centuries, for example. The early Christians were persecuted immigrants, just to make a comparison in today's time. And they were persecuted. They, they were going around many different European countries. And uh, they had a kind of... Uh, communal uh, style of life, sharing everything, etc., etc., And uh, wealth was not a virtue at that moment. And even when the, the, the religion, the, the Christianism was uh, made of the official religion of the empire of um, Constantine in uh, the fourth century, 325, 325 um, even so, the, Catholicism for a long time in different uh, denominations considered uh, wealth uh, 
a, a sin, not not a virtue. Mm -hmm. It was in the Renaissance that when the Christianism uh, changed almost everything. Not Christianism. Christian, Christianism changed its own view. For example, the, the medieval times, the nature was enchanted. Uh, during the Renaissance, the, na the nature was dead. So they were able to conquer and exploit it because there was not part, it was not a sacred uh, um, realm anymore. Right. It was a, it was a non-entity. Therefore, exactly like it was yeah, in, in, yeah. among Indians, for example. Yes. Okay. So that w they were Christian as well, but you cannot compare one Christian with the other. They had completely different uh, worldviews. And during the Renaissance, particularly in, uh, with the Protestant ethics and the Calvin, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, ethics, they, they, and for many, wealth was no longer a sign of uh, uh, a sign of sin, but a sign that you were um, favored by God. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Jesus, you, that is the point. Uh, everybody knows, but uh, nobody cares about uh, certain uh, ideas he had. For example, the very simple idea that when he said, uh, it's easier for a camel to go through the eyes of a needle than a rich man uh, get into to the, the kingdom, the, of, the kingdom God, of God. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what is that? Come on. But uh, the, the Renaissance uh, Christianism uh, said, oh, no, let's just say that when, when, where you, you read white actually means black. That is interpretation. Okay. So, and then you have a completely different um, uh, Christianism that was pro-capitalism. But uh, if you go back to the gospel, you are going to find something different. For example, the very few moments when Jesus was angry in a temple was why? Because uh, people were making money in, in the temple. <laughs> but uh, today it's something quite uh, common to collect money because God is going to give you more. It's very common. So you have uh, that thousands of different Christianism. <laughs> Which means that uh, a religion is not based on a book; it's based on your interpretation of that book. And everybody's sure that my interpretation is the only one possible, and the rest are just fools who are going to burn up in hell. And that is why they hate each other, obviously, and forget the most important teaching of Jesus: that which is love one another, right? Yeah. yeah, and even love your enemy. Who loves the the enemies today? Actually, uh, I wanna, I wanna explore one uh, a quote that you from Samuel Huntington I would like you to 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 talk about this one a little bit just which we can probably actually use it sort of as a wrap up idea right mm -hmm. uh, this quote says uh, the West did not conquer the world through the superiority of its ideas values or religion but through its superiority in applying organized violence. Westerners tend to forget this fact. Non-Westerners never forget it. So, uh, I don't know. what Lo Losers never forget. Losers never forget. And winners try to forget history as much as possible. <laughs> even, though, even though, I mean, so I guess that old adage of uh, history is written by the winners yeah. essentially would be more more accurate if we say history is erased by the winners it, obviously you, to to write your history you have to erase the history to oh. rewrite it okay and you have the power to do it because you are the winner mm -hmm. but uh, those who, who lost keep looking for the truth okay um, but in the case of Huffing, Huffington, uh, the idea was basically the clash of civilization. That was an article in a book that the, the idea of uh, the, in the 90s that there was going to be blocks in the world uh, mm -hmm. fighting each other. Uh, I remember at that moment I wrote uh, some articles and just saying that, that there is not uh, now and there is not going to be a clash of civilization, but a clash of interest. And uh, right now we are having a, having a um, fight or battle of uh, tribes, not big blocks, but tribes, different uh, nations uh, trying to build walls around to separate from the rest of the world, etc. They are more the tribalistic uh, mentality, sometimes mm -hmm. based on race, sometimes based on uh, geography, whatever. Um, but uh, look at, just think about the outcome of all that history. If we have the American population in this uh, audience, all the American population we put in this audience, half of it, 
half of that uh, this audience owns less than one percent of the total wealth of this country. So the 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 wealth is is increasingly being concentrated in a few and a few and a fewer hands. That is very dangerous because up to a point it's going to be a, a break. But um, they normally say, well, the, we need to uh, to pass a tax cut in order to benefit the big uh, guys because they create jobs. Of course, wor workers never create jobs, right? <laughs> Just uh, those who don't work. Uh, the, the consumers, doesn't matter. They, they don't uh, play in this game. Um, but this theory that was very popular in the 80s, that is the trickle-down theory, that is benefit the, the very rich and the wealth will drop down to the poor. That never happened. But also, consider that uh, our world was not built by them. If you, if you name me one billionaire, and there are some that I would say, Bill, Bill Gates, uh, I, I have sympathy with Bill Gates, he's a good guy, uh, make donations, etc. But uh, the billionaires never invented a one single uh, thing that benefited the whole humanity. They just cash in what the humanity has been creating, inventing, and uh, all that knowledge that has been accumulated in technology. Mm -hmm. uh, internet was not invented by Bill Gates, not by Steve Jobs. They just cash in because internet, uh, computer was never invented by them. And uh, what about all the effort that uh, professors, uh, researchers, um, and the people who pay for those professors through taxes never no, got yeah. that effort back? So there is. Behind that uh, narrative of the clash of uh, civilization, there are very few people that are, are profiting from all those uh, distractions mm -hmm. that are masked. And people are completely distracted. And, some, and the racial uh, anti-immigrant uh, uh, fights are completely childish distractions, completely. And uh, immigrants are... Com uh, not responsible for all the problems we have in this country. We have a lot of criminality. They are the least uh, group. Uh, the, the least likely group to be likely group involved to commit, in. Uh, involving yeah. crimes. But we, the narrative say exactly the opposite. More distraction. Uh, try to, to find a scapegoat and try to kill the weak. Because it's very easy to demonize the weak. Mm -hmm. And so I, just going back to uh, Huffington, I still think that it was just a distraction. Um, I just wanted to know what your thoughts were about uh, yellow, yellow journalism uh, that arose near the Spanish and American War, the uh, Cuba-American War at that time, around like 1898, I believe. Um, I just wanted to know what your thoughts on that was. <laughs> That, that was uh, the, the, the very well known and then put in practice many times uh, um, uh, strategy of the uh, false flag. The, uh, and the false flag was the, the, the main, um, I mean, the, the attack of the, that ship in the, in, near Cuba um, to implicate Spain in that war. Uh, that, that's not completely clear yet, but there are uh, different explanations to, to that, uh, that, um, that event. The, the, Amer the American politicians said that that, that ship was uh, attacked by uh, Spanish uh, um, uh, Navy. Right. Navy. And, uh, but Spain at that moment was very weak and uh, was the, the least country wanted to, to challenge the US in front of very, very close to, to, to Florida. So first point. The second point is that uh, there was a commission, that uh, American commission, that tried to investigate that. If that was a, uh, um, a false flag action, or was actually the Spaniard, the Spaniard who sunk that, that ship. And the commission apparently, uh, apparently, uh, um, the conclusion was that uh, the Spanish were, were not responsible. Some. Apparently, some people say that was not very clear, but that was an American commission, and uh, they never conclude that it was actually the Spanish who did that. But that was post facto, once yes, everything yes. had already happened. Yeah, when, and, yeah. when truth is not uh, important or dangerous anymore. Yeah. Uh, that, that's normal. And uh, that, that the idea of, of, of false flag has been um, um, used or 
yeah, the idea in many other cases, and sometimes called uh, conspiratory theory, sometimes there is proof that it, it was actually real, sometimes it's, it's very difficult to clarify that. Do you think that sensational and sensationalism journalism uh, is a huge problem today? It has existed for a long time. I would say that sensational uh, is a problem, but it is, it is even worse um, uh, lines journalism or complacent journalism. You talk about these major issues such as um, income disparity or inequality or reactionary attitudes to immigration. As a writer, uh, do you feel like you have, can play a role in combating these issues? Well, I would say that everyone has a role in the society and doing what, whatever you, your profession is, you have a way to uh, uh, contribute posi positively based on your morals, your, based on your values, but also based on certain commitment to truth. Because uh, normally that is uh, something uncomfortable to do. You know, you say, uh, I think uh, it was Martin Luther King who said, uh, I'm not sure about that, but uh, to make enemy, just say what you think. Uh, and uh, that's very, very um, uncomfortable and sometimes dangerous. Uh, but anyway, you, we have a moral obligation. Uh, if you are an artist, uh, if you are a musician, um, of course, art is not politics, but uh, sometimes it's crossed by, by social pol political issues. Uh, everything is crossed by social political, even religion, you know, Jesus' crucifixion was a highly political uh, execution. Uh, it was religion as well from a religious point of view, but uh, it, it clearly it was political. So uh, politics is, uh, is the business of power, therefore we cannot avoid being crossed by that in whatever we, we do. Uh, uh, politics is uh, uh, everywhere. For a writer, of course, and also perhaps even more because we have certain pl uh, visibility compared to a worker, uh, someone who works in construction, for example. So we do have um, even more responsibility, I think. Check, check. Ooh. So two parts. The first part is I'm wondering if um, if popular culture can be subversive, because popular culture is kind of inherently a commodity, and it's economically based. So is there a possibility of that, of, of, uh, of, of it being subversive? And the second part of the question is, um, are economic analysis of, analyses of society sufficient? It seems like some economists think that you know everything boils down to economics, but there has to be something more, just something to Maybe you repeat yourself and answer yeah, that. The, yeah. The, uh, about the first, the first uh, um, um, part, pop, pop culture or popular culture can be both uh, subversive or complacent and uh, work as an uh, anesthesia for the people. And particularly those uh, that popular culture that is produced by the market. For example, in if you produce a movie or a novel that. Uh, it's very popular, easy to sell, easy to read. It's go probably it's going to work uh, very functionally to the status quo. It's going to work as an anesthesia. And, uh, but on the other hand, uh, there, were, there are many cases of popular culture, like songs, uh, et cetera, that, that um, were very frontal to certain injustice or cer certain political uh, situation. And in that case, uh, as I said, may work in both ways. Uh, obviously, I prefer the second one, the, the subversive, in the sense not of the destructive, but uh, the, to uh, challenge power. Power always needs to be challenged, always. The power doesn't need uh, flatterers. Well, they like, but uh, they don't need it. Uh, so power needs to be challenged. Uh, and the second part, yeah, I do agree that uh, the analysis that reduce everything to the economy is too reductionist. Uh, we, we as a human being have other dimensions. For example, when we talk about art and that's crossed by, by politics as well, uh, because we live in a society, in poly, from Greek, that's a city society. Um, but also I think that there are certain things that we also explore in literature, in art, that are kind of universal. For, for example, if you read um, 
uh, Shakespeare, if you read um, the Greeks, if you read uh, some Latin American novelist or an American, US American uh, writer, whoever, you uh, can explore your own interiority um, regardless of the moment it was uh, written, regardless of the place it was written, etc. So that shows that uh, there are certain universal values, like in moral, in moral theory, you have a v certain uh, universal base, don't kill, don't steal, etc. And then have different ethics, right? And the same in, in, the, in other aspects, for example, in, in art. You, of course, we, we, uh, we have other di uh, human dimension that has if not nothing to do, at least they are independent to the the economy, the the politics uh, itself. But fortunately, we are very complex uh, uh, human beings, and art has that particularity to explore and expand our interior world. I wanted to give I wanted to give the, the students a chance to speak up because I'd much rather hear from you all. But um, I uh, have a question to to bring us back to something uh, more present tense. Um, I think we've all seen that in different areas of the mainstream media, the, the figure of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is, is being mocked and scorned in a lot of ways. And I wonder um, if you think that is mostly due to her youth, to her being a woman, to her being more on the left end of the spectrum, at least relative to what the spectrum is in the United States. Um, to her not being from a wealthy family. Uh, I just wondered what you would attribute that really open scorn that so many people have for Alexandria yeah. Ocasio-Cortez. I, I would say that is because of everything you mentioned, you listed. <laughs> Yeah, it's, so it would be it would be a perfect uh, the poster child of intersectional theory, right? <laughs> and uh, consider that uh, historically also the 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 American president had to be poor and uh, and um, be then success and get the the government that that was kind of a, a very old fashioned tradition that uh, was broken recently. Um, but of course, the gender, uh, ethnicity, uh, age, uh, uh, ideology plays a very important role. But also, I think there is a very imp another important point there. Nobody uh, mocks and uh, invests a lot of uh, energy trying to disqualify someone that has no chance to challenge you. And she has that, that uh, potentiality, I think. I would, I really appreciate you, your coming here. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know about you all, but I had a blast. <laughs> Call me nerd. It's all right. Uh, and anyway, well, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Clap. Yeah, fine. <laughs>